Hey there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video, we'll be going over the Green Revolution, also known as the Third Agricultural Revolution. We'll also be talking about Dr. Norman Borlaug and a possible Fourth Agricultural Revolution that might be happening right now. If you haven't watched my other videos on the agricultural revolutions, make sure you check those out first. Those will be important to understand what's happening in this video. You can click on the cards on the top right to see those. But now let's actually get into the green revolution, what it is and what's happening with it. This is going to be important for us to understand if we're going to understand just agriculture as a whole. Around the 1970s and 1980s, we started to see research be done on how to develop new agricultural practices and increase our output. This is a really important shift in our agricultural production. Now we're trying to take things that we create in a lab and actually bring it into the field. So we're starting to see some biotechnology be used here. We're starting to see some food engineering. And this is really important because this is the start of the Green Revolution. Now, a couple practices started here, and these are really important. One, we started to see an introduction of newer, higher yielding seeds that were able to produce a better yield, which meant more food was starting to be grown. And we started to get into a little bit of our genetic engineering. The other thing that we started to see is an increased use of chemical fertilizers. As we started to see new ways, besides just manipulating plants, now we can actually create a better environment to be able to grow more and to be able to grow at higher quantities. And this is really important because now we're going to also start to see an increase in industrial farming. So we're seeing all of a sudden this big shift come into agriculture. And this is going to help out our entire population as now we can get more food and we can get more food at a smaller amount of land. So we're able to produce more with less. And that is huge. This is something that Malthus definitely did not predict. And this kind of counters Malthus's idea. If you need more information on Malthus, check out my video on Malthus and Thanos and the Avengers. You can click the card on the top right. Thanks to the Green Revolution, we started to see increased productivity on farms. We saw a more connected world as now we started to see more trade happening, particularly with agricultural products. Not even just finished ones like you would think of, but people started exchanging seeds to try and be able to manipulate and create more things in the lab that could, in turn, create more things in the fields. We also started to see the sharing of ideas as more people worked to try and create better yielding seeds. Now it wasn't all good though. We also started to see a decrease in family farms as we saw more larger companies start to invest. Now this won't happen until down the road, but it is an effect of the Green Revolution. We also eventually get into some potential animal rights abuse and some issues there as we start to see our production of animals even change as well. So the Green Revolution had a very lasting impact on our agricultural system. One really important person to remember is Dr. Norman Borlaug. He actually won a Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 for his work. He actually helped save Mexico, India, and Pakistan and other countries with his ideas with wheat. He brought India from a deficit of wheat production where they were actually just constantly importing it from other countries into a massive surplus. He worked with seeds to be able to create a better, stronger, healthier stock of wheat that could actually increase the output in areas that normally couldn't produce as much. He saved over a billion lives because of his production and his research and how he was able to use seeds and a little bit of genetics to create a longer lasting, higher yielding seed that could produce more food and help these developing countries where people had traditionally been struggling to eat. So this was a major advancement, and this is just a very significant event within the Green Revolution itself. So in this video, I've been talking a little bit about genetics and seeds and trying to merge things in a lab. One thing to note for the Green Revolution is we're talking about things that could have happened kind of in nature. Now there is a possible fourth revolution that might be coming. Some people say it's here, some people say it's down the road. The big difference between the Green Revolution and the possible fourth would be now using genetics in ways that would be unnatural. They would not happen in the natural world. Combining different species, trying to figure out different ways to breed animals that are larger, trying to change plants and their structure. 
We also could see a fourth revolution with technology, with vertical farming, with more drones, with more GPS, and other technological advancements that could increase our yield. The fourth revolution is uncertain if we're in it right now or if it's coming, but it's something to think about. The big difference though between the green revolution and this possible fourth is going to be the genetic modification. Green revolution is focusing more on things that could happen naturally. Fourth is now getting into some new territory. Hopefully this video helps you better understand the green revolution, Dr. Norman Borlaug, the possible fourth revolution, and how it'd be different than the green revolution. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. I'm Mr. Sin, thanks for watching this video, and until next time, I'll see you online.